I'm Cheyenne Cooper. I'm 18 years old, and I almost died in a car accident because this girl had a moth fly into her car. On June 3rd, I was going in with my brother and my son to go door dash and just go make a couple little bit of change to go get some snacks or whatever to eat. And then we were just driving around and did a couple orders, had fun, and got in the car like no other day. It was nice. It was sunny outside. It was actually like the perfect day. I didn't think the day was just going to go horribly how it did. Me and my brother, we had just picked up a order from Walgreens, and it was like some like mucinex and like some baby stuff. And so picked up the order, and we drove down Willot Road. It was about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night, and I just see these headlights, and they are like going around the corner, and it kind of looks like a zigzag almost. And I'm like telling my brother, and I'm like, hey, do you know what that person's doing? They're kind of going crazy or whatever. I don't know what that is. And then five, not even five seconds later, just boom, got hit right head on. This girl's car came right over into my lane. And she like did like a maneuver around. She like kind of swooped around and hit me directly head on around the corner on Willow by the fire station. And then all I remember is these big old bright lights and the, just a loud ringing noise in my ears. And I could hear my brother and my son scream. And I could just hear the ringing of it over top of their voices. And I'm just like, I can't feel my leg. I can't feel my leg. That's what I'm thinking in my head over and over and over again. My leg's numb. I can't feel it. My son's screaming. My brother's screaming. I don't know what's going on. All I was doing was trying to make money. My car is messed up. I'm trying to frantically get out of the car and try to help my son out and I instantly open up the door put my left foot out and try to stand up and I immediately fall over and my right leg goes in like a, a pinwheel circle almost three full, three full 60 just going right around in a circle and I just remember laying there on the ground pretty much screaming for help I can't get up my leg's broken, I, I can't move, I can feel my feet, I know I'm not broken, I've seen Grey's Anatomy, I know I'm not paralyzed, that's one good thing. And I'm just sitting there holding my son in my arms because he ran up to me, he got out of his seat and ran up to me and he was holding me and his mouth was just full of blood because he had lost his, um, his lost, he lost two teeth in it. And I'm yelling at my brother. I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? And he's, he moved, maneuvered himself to the back seat. And he was sitting there. And he was like, no, my leg's broken. I can't move my leg. My leg's wobbling around. I can't move it. I'm bleeding and everything. And I couldn't get to him at the time because I was outside of the car holding my son. And I was sitting there just thinking, why did this have to happen to me? What did I do so wrong? At least I'm alive and my family's alive, but I, why did this have to happen to me out of everybody? And just reliving that over and over and over in my head, I see two guys run up to me and they were like, oh my God, and then they just ran away. They didn't come up and help me as I'm screaming for help. I'm so lucky that it happened in front of the fire station because if it didn't, I was not able to reach my phone. I was not able to call anybody and then the firefighter came out of the the fire station and he was helping me he was like are you okay can you feel your back can you feel your neck and i was like yes 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 i just can't feel my leg i know my leg's broken and i'm sitting there on the ground just looking at my leg backwards and it's it's just horrible i didn't have any blood but it was, you could see the bone just like move around in my leg and it was just not fun at all. I tried so, so hard to just like keep calm and with just like the shock and the adrenaline in me, I didn't feel that my leg was initially broken at first. I just felt the numbness. And so when that shock hit me, I was like, oh no. And I was just sitting there moving my leg in my 
like just moving it back and forth, wiggling the bone around in my leg because of the shock. I couldn't feel it. And they picked me up off the ground with the stretcher. And that's when I felt it. It hit me so hard that it, it just felt like someone threw like a thousand pins and needles at you over and over and over again. And it was just like four seconds that they had picked me up off the ground and it, it just hurt. Constant pain. They got me into the ambulance. We got to the hospital and they said, you have a broken femur and we have to put a rod into your leg. And when I heard that, I just blacked out. Like, I don't really remember half of that part, but I woke up through parts of it and they were telling me if my brother's okay, my son's okay, my brother just has a broken femur too. He had the left and I had the right, so we were twinning. And we both had to get rods in our legs and it sucked. I woke up and they had this contraption on my leg and it, it's like, it pulls the bone to make it straight and it had a sandbag at the end. And I woke up when they had it in and I was like, oh, what's this? And I just right back to sleep. And then they woke me up again and they were like, oh, well, it's time to put the rod in your leg. And I was like, you didn't do that yet? I woke up and you were had a sandbag and everything on my leg. And they were like, nope. So the way that they did the rod is they went in through my hip and put the rod in there. And then to stabilize, they had to cut like five more incisions to stabilize it down into my leg. And then they had to take a hammer and just hammer it down into my femur. And they had to do the same thing with my brother. And I don't remember that part because I was out asleep. I've been a good driver. I don't have any tickets. I don't have any accidents. I, I've always been perfect. I've been driving since I was 15 years old. I had my permit and everything. I got it on the same day. I have, I have a kid, so I have to be a good driver. I'm never going to put anybody in any type of danger. So I need to have the great record of driving, the safe driving, stay in the speed limit, seatbelts on in the car all the time. I'm so lucky that everybody had their seatbelt on. Without a seatbelt, you don't know what could have happened. We could have all been dead and nothing. Nobody would have ever expected that to ever happen. I really thought my grandma and my dad were there because my grandma and my dad have passed. And then the way that the cars were, they were usually when a car gets hit head on, they're pretty intertwined together. The way our cars were, they were completely separated. Completely, like at least like a two foot gap, two or three foot gap in between. Pretty big. And I thought that either my dad or my grandma had like stepped in between and like pushed the cars apart to where they'd stopped the crash almost. Because whenever I think about it, I see the crash like in a, in a different perspective and I can see it from me getting hit and I could see like a shadow kind of in the middle where the light was coming and I was like somebody saved us that day and I'm extremely thankful for that. The girl that was driving the other car she had four people in her car and they had a moth come into their car and she was swatting at the moth and that's what made her hit me directly head on going 60 miles an hour around the corner. I wasn't able to drive for at least two and a half months and I was just pretty much scared of everything. And the day I had to leave the hospital, I had to get back into a car and just seeing a car turn a corner freaked me out. And just seeing a car or the, the, the same color just freaked me out. And every time I would close my eyes, I would just see the lights of the headlights coming directly at me. And anytime I still now, even six and a half, seven months later, I still see, like if I see a car driving, me, I see them drifting off into my lane. At first, when I got my car, I was kind of worried because 
I was like, I don't want to drive at night because that's when my accident happened. And, or I don't want to drive on this road because that's where my accident happened. And I would drive on the road and I would get like the tenseness in my chest. And I would feel like I wouldn't be able to breathe it just because of the, how bad that accident was. Because I don't know if I wouldn't have worn my seatbelt, I could have been dead. That's That's just one crazy thing that just messes with my head a little bit because one little thing could have killed me. A little bug in somebody else's car could have killed me and my family. And at the end of the day, I'm so thankful for just everybody being safe and everybody wearing their seatbelts and everybody keeping calm at least to kind of keep calm during that. I'm just so thankful and I'm so thankful for the medical staff that really helped a lot because I I would have been way more messed up than anything and they were there they got there quick they did everything they needed to and I'm just so grateful to be here still I became more like energetic and like I be, like loved life a lot more since then and I just think back to I could have lost my life that day. And so now I try to do everything that I can, go everywhere that I can, try to see everything, go travel and go do this and that because you never know if your life's just gonna end like that. You never know when your day will come. And it could be in a freak accident. It could be just natural. It could be anything. But you never know when that day's gonna come. And so one day you're just gonna have to prepare for it and be there and be happy and live the life that you need to live and live it to the fullest. And don't take granted for that. My son's been fine and he got his teeth in, but now he just lost his two front teeth because he's getting older, he's losing them teeth. But he's been fine, he's been the most like active kid ever. And even after the accident, he was still happy. He was in the hospital like, yeah, I'm chilling here. I'm okay. I'm okay. He got little bruises and stuff, but he was, he was a really strong fighter. And I can't believe that he had the strength to get out of the car and still come and hold me. And when, cause I wasn't able to get to him, he still came and helped me. Even if you think it won't save your life, please wear your seatbelt. It, it, it'll help you in the long run because I didn't think it would. But it really did.